If you've been watching the crypto markets at all lately, you've likely seen a sea of red price action and probably have gotten a little bit scared. After Bitcoin firmly broke 100K, most crypto prices have been down only for nearly a month. So what happened? Has the 2025 crypto bull market ended already? Are we going to go into another extended bear market? If not, how much time do we have left? And what could happen next? Well, that's exactly what I'm explaining this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis, who see multiple crypto cycles. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And while there's definitely some good money to be made in the crypto markets by investing in crypto, the absolute best way to capitalize on this space is to increase your income and become a blockchain developer so that you can make money in any crypto market, whether it's a bull market or a bear market. And I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's look at what the heck is going on with the crypto markets. Now, obviously nothing I'm saying in this video is designed to be financial advice. I'm not trying to convince you to buy, sell, or hold any cryptocurrency based on this information. But let's try to see what's going on and determine whether the top is in or whether we still have time left in this run and potentially how much. Now, as always in these videos, I try to let you know that you know nobody has a crystal ball to determine exactly what's going to happen next and nobody has a clear clairvoyant insight into the future. But what we have to do is basically look at the factors at play and then determine the likely outcomes and then rank those outcomes in terms of likelihood, like which is probably going to happen and what's probably not going to happen based on the information that we have available. So that being said, let's consider the information available. Let's first talk about you know the factors that have made this bull run work up to date and the factors that are probably influencing what's happening to the price right now and how those could play out in the future. All right, so some quick reasons why this run has worked in the first place. Number one is time, and that's got to do really with the four-year cycle thesis. Now, if you've watched my channel at all, you know I'm not a huge believer in this like prophecy about every four years, you know, something happens with Bitcoin like right on schedule. But I do think there's something to be said about just time in between cycles. Okay, so basically, you know, cryptocurrency is a very volatile asset class. It goes up really fast and it goes down really fast. And after it's gone down, you need time in between the big peaks and for new price levels to emerge. Okay, because think about it. If you think that crypto is the future, like I do, like many other people watching this channel, then when the price goes down really far, you're going, hmm this looks like a buying opportunity. And obviously the most you know aggressive and risk-taking individuals are going to try to get the opportunity to buy the bottom, okay? And then slowly more people start to believe that and then the cycle resumes and you eventually reach higher price levels. That's basically what's been happening. It's happened approximately every four years. But my whole thought is that you need time in between cycles and we've had plenty of time. And of course, history is somewhat repeating itself. So reason number two is financial conditions improving. OK, so one of the big reasons that the last cryptocurrency bull run ended so fast was because we basically hit a wall in terms of financial conditions across the world. OK, basically, we went through a period of historically low interest rates and then those interest rates rose really, really fast. OK. And basically, all markets essentially hit a wall. The stock market went down really fast. The crypto market went down really fast. And real estate also stagnated as it adjusted to these new interest rates as well. But what we saw is that basically in 2023, the interest rate hikes stopped. Okay, And they paused for quite some time and they started to come down. And that's been, in my opinion, a big factor in why we've seen crypto markets and other markets succeed over the past you know, two years. Reason number three is Bitcoin and crypto ETFs. So basically, what is an ETF? It's an exchange traded fund. It's a way for people to purchase Bitcoin through a traditional exchange like you might you know, with the stock market. OK, this attracts you know, certain types of investors into the space. Uh, they might want to purchase cryptocurrency through traditional financial accounts and also institutional investors. OK, so we've seen a huge inflow into Bitcoin ETFs, also Ethereum ETFs. I believe that's a big reason why we've seen crypto prices go up over the past two years. Number four, of course, is just technological developments. You know, I'm a blockchain developer. I work in this space and it's constantly evolving and changing and the technology is improving. We're coming up with new solutions for use cases that blockchain technology can actually make our lives materially better. And then number five, of course, is the incoming administration inside the United States. Again, I don't love talking about politics on my channel, but I do believe this is a 
factor because, you know, at least what the incoming administration is saying is that they are the most pro-crypto administration, you know, in the history of the world. And if they fulfill their campaign promises, we'll likely see things get a lot easier for crypto and have less headwinds. And I believe this is a factor for prices going up. So with all that being said, and those are some reasons why prices have, you know, trended higher. So why are things so bearish right now, at least over the past month or so? Well, what you have to understand is that, you know, crypto does not exist in a vacuum. And this, you know, down only month that we've seen has also basically happened in the stock market as well. If you look at major indices like the S&P 500, they've been in a little miniature bear market for the past month. And so if two things look alike, then you have three possibilities. Either one influences the other, they have a common influence, or it's a complete coincidence. So I don't think it's a coincidence. I think they share a common influence, which is there's a lot of turbulence happening in the world right now. I think that's what the data is telling us. We've got a lot of crazy stuff happening right now, like the wildfires in California. So if you were affected by these, you know, we're, we're thinking about you here on this channel. We got winter storms, you know, sweeping the United States and other parts of the world. And these are things that, you know, markets are not going to like because they don't like uncertainty because of any potential contagion risk that can happen with these massive types of events. Not to mention that, you know, the rate cuts that I mentioned before are happening, but they're not happening as quickly as people would like. And that's got to do with the economy and at least their assessment of the economy what they're saying, okay, that it's stronger than they previously predicted it could be, and that they have lots of time before they have to aggressively cut rates and will likely kick the can down the road for some of these rate cuts people were hoping would come a lot sooner. And another reason is actually the incoming administration. Now, before I was talking about this being a good thing for crypto, at least the markets viewing it that way, but there's a lot of anticipation that, you know, the, you know, the actual inauguration day when the president is installed inside the United States could be a sell the news event where basically everybody's hyping this up ahead of time. And then whenever it finally happens, then, you know, the price goes down. Now, markets have a way of punishing the majority. So when everybody starts to think that something's going to happen, a lot of times it just doesn't happen. OK, and so what we could see is actually some of this sell the news or profit taking well ahead of this event. And that could be a factor in why we're seeing some of the prices cool off right now. Not to mention the fact that the current administration, not the incoming administration, has actually, you know, had a clear court order to where they're allowed to now sell uh, the Bitcoin, I think it's roughly 69,000 Bitcoin that was seized during uh, the Silk Road case. OK, so if you're not familiar with that, just Google Silk Road Bitcoin. It'll explain everything. But basically, you know, the U.S. government already has a bunch of Bitcoin that it seized. And the, the new administration wanted to use that to bootstrap uh, the strategic Bitcoin reserve for the United States current administrations like, oh, let's just sell it before they get in there. And the market does not like this either. Now, for clarification, uh, I believe the court order was just permission to do this. I think it would take some time for it to happen. It's not necessarily going to happen. And I believe it's possible for the new administration, from my understanding of things, I'm getting that political expert, that the new administration can actually reverse this before it gets sold. But regardless, the market doesn't like this. Uh, Germany sold a lot of seized Bitcoin uh, that was almost the same size, a little bit less. Within the last year, markets didn't like that either. It caused some significant downward price action. And I believe that's another reason why we're seeing sort of down only for the last month. Okay, so those are some of the factors, in my opinion, about why we've seen some bearish price action over the last month, despite the good things that are going for the entire crypto market. So what potentially is going to happen next? Like, where could we go from here? Well, again, you have to think about these things in terms of probabilities and possibilities and then rank those things, okay? Because nobody truly has a crystal ball, but let's look at the possibilities on the table. So possibility number one is that, well, the crypto market has topped, okay? And that, you know, this is the end of the, the bull market and that we could see a multi-month, potentially multi-year uh, bear market that could take us down to significant lows, uh, you know, 50 plus, 70, 80, 90% from current price levels before you know, we just repeat the entire thing again, potentially even in perpetuity. That is one possibility on the table. So another possibility is that this really is just a correction, okay? And that price has been down for a month, that that's a thing that happens in bull markets and that we could see this party actually resume with another leg up potentially sooner than a lot of people think. Because you have to understand, you know, in bull markets, nothing goes up in a straight line forever. During the last two bull cycles, we saw some pretty crazy volatility. I mean, during the last bull market in 2021, Bitcoin had a 50% price drop in the middle of the bull market before it went on to put a double top towards the end of that year. Altcoins went absolutely crazy, okay? 
you know, you can even see takes like this with the, uh, you know, sort of Wall Street psychology cheat sheet where you see how markets sort of take off, where you have an awareness phase, which could be what we've just gone through, where you have a bear trap, which could be what's happening now before you get this massive impulsive move where you get things like media attention, enthusiasm, greed, delusion, all this type of stuff. And so in that scenario where prices actually continue to trend higher at some point in the future, relatively soon, what could that actually look like? Well, the current bull run could give us some clues into that, okay? I see a couple possibilities on the table. Number one is if you look at what Bitcoin has done pretty much ever since the beginning of this current bull market, which you can measure down here from the lows. Again, I'm going to measure a bull market from the bottom all the way to the top where that could be. Um, it's kind of done this thing where you'll see these big impulsive moves and then things get boring for weeks or even months. Okay, you can kind of see that here. Kind of a week, multi, couple month pattern, small move, couple month pattern, small move, couple month pattern. Okay, another move, a few weeks, another move, many months, another big move, and TBD question mark about how long this could be slightly bearish or even consolidate for the next one. Okay, if we have another scenario where it takes six months before the price firmly makes another impulsive move, it's going to cause a lot of people to kind of check out, forget about crypto, but they could be missing the absolute best part of the run after that. Okay, now another possibility is we enter into this sort of mania phase after this first big bear trap, kind of like we're seeing right here, where things then go you know, full on crazy bull market, okay? Where you start to see these big impulsive moves and corrections like you see here in the last bull market, like boom, correction, boom, correction, boom, 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 until it kind of weakens and tapers off and then, you know, the top is in. And if that happens, you know, how long could things go on for? Well, it really depends on how impulsive the next moves are and what the potential correction is after that. So if you see a massive, massive impulsive move next like in a couple of weeks, like if Bitcoin starts to run and it goes something like $250,000 in a matter of, you know, six weeks to eight weeks or something like that, that's probably a pretty significant top signal. I don't think that's super sustainable. And we probably see things start to correct hard after that. So if that's the case, then, you know, the top could be two to three months away from the time recording this video. But if that doesn't happen and we see more modest impulsive moves, like I've been talking about before, where, yeah, these are impulsive, but they're not like crazy, right? Like this could go up and then start to consolidate, be slightly bearish, go up, slightly consolidate and bearish. Then that could significantly lengthen the time, okay? Because you have to think about it, as you build these bases, it gives you longer and it gives you potential higher highs. And so that could put us at a top at the end of this year or potentially even into next year. All right, so with all that being said, those are the possibilities that I see on the table. Now, what's my actual opinion, okay? If I'm just kind of take a bet on what do I think is going to happen, uh, well, let's talk about that. So again, not financial advice, you know, I'm not saying that I have clairvoyant insight into the future. I just been here a while and, you know, just like everybody else, I have to make an informed decision on what I think is going to happen because, hey, I'm investing in this asset class. So bottom line is, I don't think that we've topped for 2025, okay, for lots of reasons. Number one, I think too many people are worried that we've topped. Again, when markets tend to all start to agree on something or too many people think something and it's floating around there everywhere online, that's generally not what happens, okay? Generally, when there's a top, everybody thinks that there can be no top or that the top is much farther down the road. That's typically what happens in these bull markets. So for that reason, I don't think that we've topped. Other stuff is, you know, potentially seeing big changes coming down the pike with the coming administration for the United States. Um, I think that stuff has too much potential to have topped early. And then finally, in terms of rate cuts, like at this point, I don't think that rate cuts are as big a factor as people think that they are. Okay. Obviously, markets want them to happen sooner, but you have to understand in the 2017 bull run, I was here, we didn't have crazy rate cuts and Bitcoin still put in insane multiples. Lots of altcoins went up like crazy. We don't have to have massive rate cuts in order for a bull market to succeed, but we're not having rate hikes and we're not having pauses. So that's a good thing. So what's my opinion about how long we have? Well, again, a lot of that is TBD. Okay. It just depends on what the impulsive moves are. That's going to be watching for if Bitcoin, you know, shoots up to 250 K in a two month time frame after this move. Well, the top's probably in. But again, if we continue that repeated behavior where things go up and they go down for many months and then we see another big impulsive move, that could wear very well carry us towards the end of this year with the four-year cycle intact or potentially even into the beginning of next year, maybe even mid next year. Now, the final caveat is, you know, again, crypto doesn't exist in a vacuum. If we see 
the world just absolutely fall apart, if we see some big war breakout, if we see some other massive event, another pandemic, something like that, then that, of course, could end the party early, okay? I'm talking about just generally favorable world conditions at this point. That also could lead to some big flash crash. And if we have some of a monetary stimulus, that could cause a V-shaped recovery to make things go much higher as well, just like we saw during COVID. And with that being said, you know, nobody's got a crystal ball to know whether those things are going to happen or not. There's a lot of this that is completely outside of control. You try to make the best decisions you can and you sit back and, you know, at least I just do mostly nothing because you can't control the markets, okay? And that's why on this channel, you know, I'm always teaching you hard technical skills like becoming a blockchain developer because the beauty of that is that's something that's actually in your control, okay? And yeah, while there's definitely some good money to be made in the crypto markets, I invest in crypto, but I also invest in my own skills because that's the thing that I have the most control over is the absolute best investment that I can make because you know, I or anyone else with those skills can make money in a bull market or a bear market. We have to wait for this thing to do what we want. We can always do what we want and make money rain or shine. And so if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to increase your income and become a blockchain developer, just like I'm talking about, then how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can see my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. I just put out a brand new one teaching you how to create a meme coin launch pad, just like pump.fun. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dap Diversity.